Okay, let's check out how to use a parametric equalizer to polish up a vocal track. And the concept is going to be the same for guitar or bass or drums or anything else. Basically, we're going to sweep the spectrum and identify frequencies we don't like and remove them. You can also identify missing frequencies and add them, but removing the bad ones usually does the trick. What I'm going to do is solo this submix track, which contains all my vocal tracks, and then solo the track I want to work on, and loop a section. And I'll let you hear what that sounds like without any effects on it. It may appear that I am chasing after a long lost dream. Now that's a nice sounding recording all by itself, but it does have a little bit too much low end, and I'm hearing some boxy mid-range in there that I don't like. So what I'm going to do is click the effects button and add the TB parametric equalizer bring up its interface and for that low end issue I'm basically just gonna pull down this point and sweep out the lows so let's listen to that while we're pulling out the low end but your reality is not mine and I don't need your steam hey. now what that does for us is anytime he pronounces the letter P or anything else with a pop in it it's going to take the low end out so your vocals aren't matching the low end of a kick drum or a bass. And now I'm hearing that boxy mid-range. So what I want to do, if I really don't know exactly what frequency it is, I'm going to take one of these center points and I'm just going to pull it around until I hear what I don't like. And I will uh, thin that out a little bit, Q factor. I'm going to raise it to an extreme so I can definitely hear the frequency that I don't like and then I know where it is I need to pull out. It may appear that I am chasing after a long lost dream but your reality It's about right there. So that's about 858 hertz where I'm hearing that boxy sound. So let's pull that out. He is not mine, and I don't need your steam. It may appear that I... And now I'm going to deactivate the plug-in, and you can hear the difference. I am chasing after a long-lost dream, but your... And with my experience, 400 hertz is generally not a good frequency, so I'm going to take this point, raise the Q factor almost all the way up around 400 hertz, and pull that out. Reality is not mine, and I don't need your steam. It may appear that I am... Now at the same time, if you feel that there's not quite enough high end, if you're not getting the uh, crispness, you can take the uh, high end shelf here and just kind of raise it up and down and, and see what a good level is I'm for you. I'm chasing after a long lost dream, but your reality is not mine, and I don't need your steam. It may appear that I am chasing after a long lost... Now if you're unfamiliar with a parametric equalizer, or maybe the only equalizer you've ever played with is on your car stereo, your home stereo, you'll know that the uh, stereo equalizer on the left are your low end frequencies, in the center are your mids, and on the right are your high-end frequencies. It's the same thing with the parametric, it's just that you have control over every single frequency between the lowest and the highest. Unlike a home stereo or a car stereo where you've only got maybe five bands or three even and when you raise one of them up you're raising a whole bunch at the same time. This is kind of what a home stereo EQ would look like. We're raising the point here but we're also raising all these other frequencies. And that's what's great about a parametric is I can thin that down to just that specific frequency using the Q factor. So now I've got tons and tons of frequencies I can adjust to get the best sound possible. A little bit about the controls down here at the bottom. The Q factor is going to be your frequency width. How many frequencies you're actually affecting by moving a single point. The gain would be 
the same as moving the uh, point up and down. You can see it change as I pull it up and down. And then the frequency right here, if I move that, my point is going to move left or right. So that's the same as moving this left or right. Let's say you have the, uh, the perfect gain and you don't really want to uh, change the gain. And grabbing the point there may cause you to mistakenly change the gain. You can just use this to move the frequency back and forth without changing your gain. Another excellent place to use a parametric equalizer is on your master track. Basically, if you've mixed the song, you've mixed each instrument, and each one has the correct sound that you want, then when you go to your master track, you can raise and lower frequencies of the total mix all at once. So we're going to listen to a little bit of this track, and then I'll adjust it with the parametric and see if we can get a little bit more of a punchy sound. Let's listen to it without the parametric doing anything. Okay, let's say I want to add a little more low-end punch to that and maybe some uh, high-end crispness. So what I might do is raise the high and low shelving a little bit and maybe pull out uh, a wide sweeping mid. So let's try that. As you can see, the parametric has a dramatic effect when used on the master track and can really enhance your final mix with just the slightest movements of the uh, frequency points. And when using a parametric on a master track, I generally don't specify frequencies uh, with the Q factor like I do with the, uh, the other tracks because as a general rule, I've already mixed those and they pretty much sound how I want them to sound. This is more like a enhancement to the entire mix, so I would generally leave this to be a pretty wide spectrum and just enhance a little bit. I hope this video tutorial has helped you understand parametric equalizers a little bit better, and thanks for using Mixcraft.